Hello YouTube, it's Sign here with Hobbies of Man once again, and today we're doing another manga first impressions slash review. I'm kind of moving away from the usual reviews that I do for individual volumes of manga. I think that it's really not just, uh, it's really not uh, like the best way to do it. So um, starting next year, I'm going to do uh, reviews for manga in arcs, plus first impressions, plus final reviews for the whole series after I finish reading it. So uh that doesn't really matter today we're talking about freezing now i don't have a i don't have them physically anymore because i actually just sold them if you watch my unhaul video um i managed to sell them uh really quickly right after putting up the um the reddit post on manga swamp and um i don't have them anymore so here's what they look like if you're interested it's uh, volumes one through four but it's com completed in two and one volumes kind of similar to the um the way tool of Rue is done so yeah um the authors here are Lim Dal Young, and the illustrator is Kim Kwang Hyun, and I think they're like a, a duo, like one of them writes, one of them illustrates, and they work together um, more than once. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that's how um, it is with them. I'm not really sure. And the publisher was Seven Seas, and the demographic was seinen, as far as I could tell, that's what I, I saw. And uh, the genres were action and science fiction. Um, I would also say there's a certain element of magic school or school life kind of setting but it wasn't like the usual slice of lifestyle it was more of the the setting of the action just happens to be a school but it's mostly an action series if that makes any sense and there was an anim anime adaptation there was actually a lot of spin-off manga as well um but i don't know anything about them so can't really say anything much about them now the premise here is basically that there's this um th th this world basically earth and got attacked by these kaiju looking things. I think they called them Pandoras or something like that. Um, or maybe Pandoras were the people that fought them. I can't remember, but it basically there's these kaiju uh, element things kind of similar to the ones in um, in Evangelion. And what happened was that um, they took m genetic material from these creatures and implanted it into women and then created these essentially super soldiers, which they would call Pandora. And they would then transplant some of that uh, genetic material onto boys and make partners for these female warriors, right? Uh, through all of this bioengineering, right? And they would fight together to fight these aliens, right? And so we follow um, these uh, students of a special military training academy called Genetics West, if I remember correctly, or West Genetics. Um, we basically follow the main character, Kazuya, and this uh, main female character called uh, Satellizer as they go through school, right? And there's this kind of ele element of mystery to Satellizer, and we try to find out more about her as the story goes on. However, I think the story for me wasn't really that uh, good. And here's the thing. It wasn't because the characters were bad, because I thought a lot of the characters were pretty interesting. A lot of their backstories were meaningful, and they kind of provided an interesting backdrop for the plot line however i thought that the plot line and the action some characters took was effectively just some sort of like sadistic revenge porn kind of thing and i don't really understand why because um they would justify it with this kind of idea that you know satellizer has done something to offend the precarious kind of um balance of power between the academy this kind of vaguely military hierarchy that exists right and they would go really far but they couldn't beat her so they would just keep attacking her and all of these attacks would just kind of culminate in these very kind of rapey situations these kind of like molestations that were really not good that were played up or painted in a way that was kind of uh, supposed to be fan service and i personally didn't find that to be very good um actually i wasn't like disgusted or anything i'm very good at kind of being able to uh, you know keep the fact that it's fiction at the forefront forefront of my mind and kind of uh being okay with a lot of things that maybe other people might not tolerate i don't really care all that much about that necessarily i just thought that that storytelling component was actually quite bad because it doesn't really lead to anything meaningful it's just kind of this repetition of these situations in order to basically have this kind of like weird fetish happen and i think I, I find that to be very weak writing and so i didn't like that but everything else about the story was really good it was just that that specific kind of uh situation that would happen was kind of annoying and not the best but overall 
quite good every in other uh you know in every other respect it's just i couldn't get over that one you know negative thing right so that's basically the issue there um but overall i thought that it was interesting i thought the um characters were kind of compelling satellizer was basically um the half uh half daughter or of this um or this the the daughter of a the bastard daughter of this kind of uh fancy guy and um she had a very interesting relationship with her mother and with a with a with a man that uh you know <laughs> had sex with her in order uh, like had sex with her mother in order for her to be born um that kind of led to the uh actual wife and children of this guy to kind of hate her in a weird way and so eventually this kind of caused some trauma and now she's basically um unable to kind of deal with uh being with others right and then there's this guy Kazuya who lost his sister and who's basically a very general good guy and then the kind of shonen style and the and um they have the, they develop this relationship through the fact that Kazuya just finds her interesting because she reminds him of his sister who died protecting uh the world from these uh, evil kaiju things right so overall um, I thought that the characters were interesting. I thought that the plot line was generally okay, except when it turned into this kind of weird, like, fetish thing that I didn't like all that much. And I thought the world building was kind of interesting. Uh, th these evil things, which we don't know anything about. I don't know if they're aliens. I don't know if they were advanced, uh, you know, humans. I don't know whatever they were. But um, they kind of posed a threat. And so humanity had to evolve and develop technology in order to fight them. The technology happened to be these warrior girls and uh, their helpers the boys and um overall pretty interesting cool kind of uh, sci-fi mumbo jumbo in order to justify the world that they're existing in uh, so overall i thought that was okay too uh, the the most interesting uh kind of thing here the most uh meaningful thing to highlight was actually that the art was really really good um the characters were very really well done uh the female characters specifically the male characters kind of suffered a bit but um I, I kind of understand that because this kind of was definitely set up to be an etchy kind of series. And so, of course, it would make sense that the female characters are important and the male characters uh, don't really matter all that much in terms of design, right? So I think the artwork was really awesome. It was very good. It had a lot of good movement and um, a kind of dynamic feeling to it. Uh, the female characters were designed very nicely and uh, the mechanical design or the alien design, whatever it's called, of their armor and when they activated their powers was really, really good. But it did have this kind of very distinct, like, not Japanese drawing style to it, which is kind of weird to say. But the more I'm kind of familiar with old school manhwa or well, old school, um, as in like 20 years ago, <laughs> compared to modern webtoon manhwa, um, I'm noticing that there's a very distinct kind of vibe to it. Um, kind of Boichi's earlier style without Boichi's like ridiculous ability to kind of convey the human figure kind of similar to the breaker actually and I'm noticing more and more and sometimes I can be like yeah this isn't really manga this is like Korean people drawing this right or or, or like maybe not necessarily Korean people but like not Japanese artists working in this uh, kind of specific style that is kind of noticeable compared to you know the usual manga style so i think it's interesting but overall i think it's really good there, it's not a, a, a this or anything that it's not japanese feeling it's just a distinct kind of feature that i noticed that i thought was kind of interesting to mention there so yeah overall uh the art was really good the fan service was kind of bad like um look i'm not a person that has issues with fan service in fact i find that most of it is kind, kind of fun um, however, the fan service here was not the best. A lot of it was really um, kind of boring. It was all like upskirt shots and kind of like, oh, the wind blew back her skirt so you can see her panties. All of that stuff is kind of boring and it's kind of ugly and like not very interesting. And I think that it's like garbage. Like, wh why would you waste your time doing this, right? Uh, as fan service goes, this is the worst type of fan service that you could make. Why would you even bother doing that? And the problem is that a lot of the more, like, fan service-y uh, scenes that were also drawn really well were also part of this kind of rapey situation that was happening. And so it soured the fan service quite a bit. It was not exciting or enjoyable because you're like, oh, these people are, like, basically, you know, assaulting this girl. This is not good, right? 
there was a few scenes that were okay like there was some bat scenes and some scenes where kind of characters are trying to decide what to wear that i thought were pretty cute um but generally the fan service was uh just not the best because it was drawn well but the situation surrounding it was not good and the kind of um the specifics that it focused on were just kind of mediocre it's like something that would be really exciting if you're 10 you know if you're like a 14 year old boy or a 13 year old boy you know like a preteen or a young teen but like anyone else is going to be like this is like dumb like why <laughs> why is this exciting right um so yeah overall i think my rating for this series is more about 3.5 out of 5 i think there was definitely strong aspects to it but uh, the bad fan service the kind of um devolution of the plot line to this kind of weird fetish thing didn't uh kind of work for me and so it kind of dropped the series quite a bit for me if it if it didn't have as much of that kind of gosh fan service and had better kind of plot line development and it didn't devolve into this kind of weird fetish thing at the end of every fight i would have actually liked it a lot more and i've actually would have been okay with not selling it and not kind of getting my 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 uh my bread for that right but because it did it wasn't really something that I was happy with keeping in my collection. And so I had to get rid of it, right? So, yeah. Um, I think everyone that wants to read this should read it just so you can figure it out for yourself. But it just wasn't for me. And that's okay. It's not really a bad thing. I liked it more than average. I think that um, it was good. Generally, just uh, too many aspects of it were not really for me. And it wasn't like... It, the rest of it wasn't good enough for me to overlook these aspects that were not for me. So, yeah, there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please would like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you thought. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. See you guys later.